Did the exorcist lady go away? Yeah, she's gone. Oh, good. I didn't want us to get eaten. Eaten? I mean, I don't know anything about a demon. It's fine, you can tell me. I'll keep it a secret, I promise. There's a lizard demon in a cave to the north. He said he'd eat the whole village up if I told anyone. I'll give you these. Don't tell anybody, alright? Got it. That's a promise. A cave to the north. Hmm. Gotta say, the folks here really don't trust the exorcists, do they? <laughs> hmm. This is actually rather good. What's wrong? A worm? Nothing. Can't taste a thing. Huh? We learned what we need to. Let's look for that cave. That woman said she was patrolling for the Abbey. What's that mean exactly? They're hand-picked agents who travel the kingdom gauging the Abbey's success in the demon fight. They also make sure the other exorcists are conducting themselves properly. I suppose you could liken them to military police. Since the Abbey imposes so many rules on the populace, they want to show they're above board. But if they need to police themselves, isn't that as good as announcing corruption in the ranks? Eh, some would say it's more honest this way. Idealism alone won't change the world. Maybe that's why our determined little exorcist was crying. I bet you're right. That does fit the picture. Although it's best not to take a woman's tears at face value. Huh? Just some common wisdom. This village seems much more run down than Helavis was. This is where the Abbey sends its malcontents. Don't conform or accept the Abbey's rules or commit a crime, and you'll end up here with the rest of the refuse. And I take it the Abbey doesn't care what happens to this place. So, disrupt their precious order, and you get banished? Exactly. I'm sure they'd say it's all part of their notion of reason. Oh yeah, that exorcist Eleanor said something like that. After the advent, the exorcist showed up to quell the tide of demons and to restore the human world. But demon blight keeps spreading, and the only places they can keep safe are a few of the bigger cities. 
There aren't enough exorcists to protect everyone. When the going's tough, cut off any excess baggage. It's the rational thing to do. I suppose so, but it's too heartless. And that right there, that's the Abbey for you. Humans aren't livestock, and we're not machines either. That's why some of us here, myself included, chose to live here of our own accord. Hmm. Guess there are all types of humans out there. The important takeaway here is that exorcists are neither invincible nor infallible. That's one fine yak you've got there. What an adorable face. You might not want to lean in too close. Hmm? Why? <laughs> that is nasty! That's why. Yaks ruminate the food they eat while they digest it. Their burps are one of the foulest things you'll ever smell. Same as cows and goats. Everyone who's raised livestock knows that. Uh-huh. I think that point's been driven home. That's a smell I never want to ruminate on myself. My granddaughter said she spoke with you. Hey, hold up. It's not like we threatened her or anything. Don't worry, I know. I gather you intend to continue your travels, yes? Then take this. It's nothing fancy, but hopefully it helps. Food's ready. It's nothing special. Ah, now that hit the spot. <laughs> hey, Velvet, can I ask you a question? You can do whatever you want, but just because you ask doesn't mean you're getting an answer. So, about that whole apple thing, you can't taste anything? Not entirely. I can taste blood. Nothing else? Nothing. And I don't think I can feel full, either. You don't think? You talk like you've never had a good meal before. I haven't. Not normal food, at least. Not since I became a demon. So, what have you been eating? Please. You were in that prison with me. I'm... sorry. Forget it. This is just what I am now. As long as I have a recipe, I can still cook. And now I don't even have to worry about how it tastes. I suppose. Food keeps my strength up. That's all I care about. Oh yeah, the guy at that weapon shop gave me some booze for the trip. I nearly forgot about it. You really think it's a good idea to drink when we've got demons to fight? A little drink will warm me up. I thought you couldn't feel the cold. That's true, I suppose. Well, I'm not drinking it anyway. I'm using it for something. Like what? Got some wounds to clean? 
That's one use for it, sure. But I've got something more practical in mind. By pouring it on the pegs that hold the blade and hilt together, the wood will swell and hold everything firmly in place in battle. You've got such a one-track mind, I swear. That's just the kind of demon I am. Oh, it's nothing. that smell oil always oh, ready to fight on my blood.
You'll be rust on my blade. I think we might be able to break this boulder. And people say I'm foolhardy. I'm serious. I think we can do it. Are we not demons? You have a point. Finished here. Don't waste my time. I can't even call that a fight. So it was tar we were smelling. Watch your step. You won't get out if you get stuck. What they say falling off a rock only makes us stronger. I don't think that's quite how the saying goes. 
I'm going to jump. Don't fall and crack your skull. We're finished here. Let's go. You'll be rust on my blade. I unleashed all my power. Don't get overconfident. Not even worth my time. Improve by fight. You'll be rust on my blade. <laughs> 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 All my power. Maybe I hope. Don't get overconfident. Deception. See this? Deception. Deception. Hold stop. Deception. Next. I'll cut down anyone in my way! <laughs> <laughs> 